All right, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for giving us a break, although it won't be a break to you because the magic of cinema. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you really think that our food system is going to collapse? It is, absolutely. And the only reason we don't think that generally yeah, yeah, yeah. is a total ignorance <laughs> of how food reaches the store and gets onto I, our I, I will say with COVID, I had, for me oh, anyways, yeah. the first inkling that this was... Because I think you, there's one thing, there's one, you can think about it theoretically. Mm -hmm. Anything that's built can be unbuilt for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. But it was when, you know, it was silly. I'm, I'm not saying this was like a huge ordeal. It's just mm -hmm. that for the first time that I ever remember, I went to the grocery store and there was no bread. Right. And um, there's also no toilet paper, blah, blah, blah. So right. n obviously this was a lot of irrational hoarding and such. But that wasn't what was revealed to me. What was revealed to me is the other contingency of my life right? Because I do not have the raw materials with which to make bread. Mm -hmm. um, and they were out of flour too. Mm -hmm. um, upon systems that are ultimately oriented towards profit production for uh, very That's few right. people. Right. That's right. So Wait. that was my experience of it. But then the bread came back. Right. I'm and not the worry it. goes away. Right, right. <laughs> That's right. right. But, you, but, but still we worrying. see the system balanced on a knife blade. Okay. Tell me that about it. There are a number of different things that if you pull any one of these things out, mm -hmm. the system is really going to collapse. One of this one of the things is petroleum. Uh, okay. if all of the food that you guys are eating is coming from all over the place. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we eat like kings because we can have an orange in the middle of the winter. Yep. We can have all kinds of things. So that system, if, if you pull petroleum out, that I think that would do it. The other thing, though, that I think that we're a little bit more aware of is that the age of the farmer now. Yeah. Uh, you know, Beth talks, about 65. Yeah. Beth talks about American the farmer. people who who check off the box and say, I'm a farmer. When they it fill out is, their income tax return, farmer, yeah, it's a right. very small number. Really small. Less than 1% of the country checks that box. And of that less than 1%, less than 25% of them actually are making a, a decent living doing it. Wow. So most people work, most couples, farm couples, work two off-farm jobs to support their farming habit. And wow. ask their children whether they want to do it. Yeah. And their they children do don't want to take it over. So there's and one reason. The rest of, you know, anybody who's not grown up with it, uh, to teach, to, to say, oh, that's really what I want to do. Now, we bump into those people frequently at the Home Centers of America, at Mother Earth News. It's very exciting to see the youth. But they are not talking about farming the way that commercial. Yeah. I mean, well, that's what's exciting. This has yeah. been an experience of mine that so sometimes with new polity, one of the critiques we get is a sort of naivety. Like they people will associate us with like a back to the land movement that doesn't understand the realities of farming. But then when you press them on it, when they talk about what are the harsh, gritty realities of farming that you're saying means means that we have a utopian right, or sort right, of right, right. A glowing idea. You're, you're happy about something that never really existed, is right. what they're telling well, you. Well, actually though, what 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 they always describe are the woes of industrial mm -hmm, mm -hmm. farming. That's of a good science. point. So what I mean is this. It, it's like there's a critique of romanticism that's good. It just says you don't know what you're talking about. You want something that's hard work and you're not prepared to do it. That's, that's right. real. I'm mm -hmm. sure you see it all the time. Mm -hmm. There's another critique of romanticism that's wrong because it's just reading in the modern scarcity-based conditions that we have produced and don't have to produce mm -hmm. into every experience mm -hmm. of the land. Mm -hmm. And so then it says, well, you don't understand that you're going to be you know, op operating tractors over 200 acres or whatever um, when that is not necessary. And right. so that's, that's what I – and – so, so this is this is a this is a critique, but it's also saying like a lot of what you're doing is the rest restoration of romanticism as a genuine motivation because what you're saying is look by getting beyond these industrial practices suddenly these things that otherwise you think aren't really happening like you know being out there and milking the cows yourself and seeing the land change and mm -hmm, living mm -hmm. the seasons it's returning beauty is returning. Absolutely. You now have motivations that aren't monetary. Right. Suddenly this kind of harsh industrial life of just, you know, scraping to yep. make money right. off of massive right. chunks of land. Right, right. Uh, and you're just growing corn and soy, which sounds 
I guess not romantic to me. I suppose there's some moments, but right. a few maybe. S- suddenly it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's we're not talking about the same thing anymore. No, that's right. That's not. right. And so did we you want to go? Started off. I, I just interject this for a moment. We even started off following that model to mm-hmm. a degree. We turned our cow loose. Oh yeah. Uh, hit the pasture, conventional grazing, and it ended up doing exactly what the cows do: is that they eat what they want. And they leave all the woody stuff, and that's what you end up with, a pasture full of woody stuff. Mm -hmm. But then when you bring man to it, and we start managing Mm. this pasture, and we start saying, cow, you can have this much of the pasture today, and this much tomorrow, and this much the next day, and they have to eat all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to eat your dessert, and you have to eat your your vegetables, and you have to eat the other stuff, And, and you're allowing that grass the rest of the time to grow back. Totally. The system, it, it is absolutely amazing. No, the, the difference between uh, life n- now within industrialism and before is that we think we have the ability to skip beyond all That's right. cyclical That's reality. Right. That's right. So we work in offices where we can control the temperature. Mm-hmm, so right. it's mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. That's right. mm, sort of springish. Right, maybe right, fall. right. 72. We have lights that mean that whether the sun's setting or rising, it's the same light for us. Mm-hmm. We have the ability to control cycles of fertility through drugs. We have the ability to just generally flat flatline rhythm within right. the world mm-hmm. and live like it's true to the point that we actually lose our ability to cope when something like a big storm or winter right, or something right, happens, right, right. right? So what you're describing is um, within rotational grazing, um, you're describing another return to a cyclical understanding of reality that mm-hmm. says what the Bible says, which is that there's a time and there's a place for everything. Mm-hmm. And it's what Figuring the animals out. did yeah. when there were not all these fences. Right. They, they would eat an area and then they would move on and move on and and held together by predators. So all we're trying to do is once again, recreate what nature so Does are you sense. convinced that the food system is well, going to collapse or should we go further I think I'm into not, that? I, I, you need to tell me why because I'm not emotionally convinced. I think like th- this is how I think about it mm-hmm. in a naive way. So I haven't had my hands in the dirt. Yeah, you have. All, I've seen your garden. Well, I garden. That's true. <laughs> and I think about these things as I garden. And I want to get to a point where, I mean, I think of my life as just these these two bars. It's like, okay, here's the money I'm giving to the city of man and here's the money I'm giving to the city of God. And what I desire for my life is when I die, I want to say I made a big chunk. I took a big chunk from that city of man bar and I moved it over to the city of God right. bar. And, but it won't uh, be money. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. Effort. It's wealth. It's Effort. Thought. Power. Right. Right. It's work. It's right, labor. Right. It's, yeah, it's, it's my, it's my life. life. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's almost like we don't value money enough sometimes because we cease to let it represent our labor. And so we cease to let it represent our life. And so then we think it's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anyways, mm-hmm. that's what, what I'm saying is, my experience is basically this. Things that are centralized into the hands of very few people are much more susceptible to catastrophe. Yes, right. There is this, um, I'm going to forget all the names and places, but basically there is, you know how America, how our real thing that we do is we just export America to other places. Yeah. That's yeah, like what really yeah, makes absolutely. money for Americans. Uh-huh. Okay, so one of the things we do is we send agriculture, yes, agribusness consultants yes, into yes, third yes. world places. That's right. Okay. Now, one of the places we did this, and I don't remember the year. I want to say it was like 80s or 90s. It's not just is one we went to. Yeah, I know. We go everywhere. I mean, we even make, and, and it's some of it's just asinine. Like we make our foreign aid dependent yes, upon people right. agreeing to asinine. buy our seeds. It's not right. asinine. It's very carefully planned. And our seeds are GMO, which means that they're not necessarily That's producing right. fertile seeds with the plant. Like, That's right. Literally... You have to keep coming back Actually, to the company. Actually, we've, we've figured out how to put a terminator gene in our GMOs so that you can't use them for seed. Not only is it illegal for you to save your genetically modified seed implanted, it's also not possible now. So just to be clear. Because this sounds a little conspiratorial. What we do as a country in giving uh, like agricultural and sort of like solving hunger-based aid right. to countries is we take a big lump of cash. And I, and I think I was just reading about this in maybe it's Kenya specifically, but it's certainly happening in Africa. Um, we say, hey, you want this cash? Mm-hmm. You can have this cash. Mm-hmm. But one thing you've got to do is use our seeds. That's right. Now, the the actual native farming that's going on there that's involves right. the collection of seeds for the next year. Mm-hmm. It involves a it, it's a abundant presumption that okay, it's going to keep giving. It's going to yeah. keep giving. So we say no, 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 can't use those. Got to use these. What we say is, well, these seeds are going to produce 
more, right? They're going to be true. bigger, That's better. Right. And there's a truth to that, right? They are yep. bigger. Some, some, um, temporarily. But what the cost is, is the destruction of independence of that yeah. country. Because just right. in the same way that they're dependent on our dollars for aid now, now they're dependent on <laughs> buying On our machines, back. our fuel, and our seed. Yeah. And, and our, our fertilizer. Mm -hmm. But, and our experts. So they so, ruin the market for the farmer who has. And so they take the money, and then That's now right. whoever's you know producing the seeds is That's making right. bank right. off of right. entire nations. That's right. Okay, so that's depressing. But <laughs> what I what I was what I was saying is my experience of food collapse is basically that when when I read the Bible, I just see that you know the centralization of power, of property, of capacity into singular points is devastatingly open to catastrophe. When we distribute ownership, when we have lots of little things, yeah. it's it means we're resilient. The right, the right, the, right. the company I was talking about that goes into went into South America and it's looking at all these peasant farms that've been there for thousands of years, maybe hundreds. I don't know. Um, and they're saying, oh well, here's one of your big problems. You, this isn't efficient at all. You've got you've got a little spot here, and then you're walking a mile right. to get to this spot here, and right. you're walking a mile to get to this spot here, and you have this big these big spaces between mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? You need to just get efficient, centralize, mm -hmm. get in one mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. We've taught the savages well. Of course, the reason that this worked is because of the particular climate meant that if That's you right. spread out your land and you had spaces in between, right. you were surviving environmental That's catastrophes right. because right. when one That's place exactly was hit, right. it wasn't like all your food production was right. gone. Right. Okay. So, you know, this is just a very obvious example of how the American project in this regard is contrary to nature right. in the sense of it tends towards efficiency at the expense of resilience. That's right. Whereas when you look at nature and its cycles, it seems to like the life of organisms, the life of environments seems to prioritize not endless growth or production. That's just right. death. I right. mean, that's rot. Right, right. That's what we call it. But it, it tries to prioritize um, strength, like Right. Resistance, right? right. To right. The, health. The health. model, yeah, sure. The model now. This is this is kind of fascinating. So our son has recently graduated from uh, Ohio State University as a vet, veterinarian. Yeah. So he's on. I mean, OSU is one of the top schools for veterinary. For veterinary science. The model that they are proposing is that all of the animals are under some sort of giant dome, yeah. and you have to put on a, a suit complete suit because what we're trying to do is keep the animals alive right because if we don't do that these animals are going to die so we're, we're proposing a completely industrial system this is the model that's being proposed by the industry for your future food right is that yeah. we're, we're going to go completely yeah, yeah. we don't have to make it up truth is, is stranger than fiction um an entirely industrial entirely centralized yes. food production system yes. that utterly ignores the nature of any of the living things involved and simply says we can crowd them into factories, mm, fool them yeah. with, with virtual reality goggles into well, thinking that they're happy. <laughs> this is the, for real. The cows are That's right. That's right. Cows and, um, and extract from them those raw materials that we want yeah. so that Joel, we can go on living in the Joel way we're Salatin living. Joel Salatin said to us, okay, let's look at this giant Google map. And he said, look at Spain. Wasn't it Spain? Yeah, it was the tip of All Gibraltar. along the back of the, the uh, at the edge of the of the country are all is all this something that looks like it's reflecting something it is gigantic green greenhouses houses, mm -hmm. huge greenhouses mm. that are growing microgreens <laughs> that are shipped all over the world to all these restaurants mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they can exotic microgreens that's, that's the future that's yeah. where they want to go and you so see now that's very uh, when you look at that you think that no, no. A ton of people look at that and they think, aren't we clever? Yeah, I Haven't well, we figured out some cool stuff? There's a limit to imagination within... My brother always likes to quote this, and I don't know exactly where it's coming from, but it's, he says it's easier to imagine the end, of, the end of the world than the end of capitalism. And I think part of this... I think that's true. And I, and I would put industrialism there generally. Yes. But like part of the reason is because it is our world. Our imagination is limited. So for us, a technological problem is, requires a technological solution. An industrial problem requires an industrial solution. Right. So the answer is never end the practice right, and begin right. a new practice, a new way of life. The we'll answer is always practice. how do we include more industrial right. inputs Absolutely. to solve the problem? That's right. right. And what this does is, and, and, and to be fair to industrialism, it can solve 
problems like that. Oh, it's like amazing. That. Very clever. But what is the expense? The expense right. is that with every machine used to solve the problem, right. ownership is being concentrated at a higher level because right. it needs and the money people. for those people that can own That's those right. machines. Because right. the thing is you can't distribute ginormous greenhouses like you're right, right, You right, certainly right. can't distribute that work right. so that many you have many ownership right. in many hands. So this is what right. I mean. I'm not saying that industrialism is just simply like incapable. Obviously it works. That's why we're so right. we're so into it. But what it does is it heightens at every point, and not just food, but just across the board, it it exchanges inconvenience for the risk of disaster, right. for collapse. Well, right. and when you say collapse, and, and this is one of the things I as well. I am I have a hard time imagining. What what, what collapse? You mean all of a sudden yeah, yeah. nobody's going to be growing anything? What What's going to happen with that? I have a feeling that what may happen is we just get sicker and sicker on the food that we're eating. The fact is that, there, that, that it's not a linear problem. Um, the food system collapsing shouldn't be pictured as a straight line that comes to an end, sure. but as a fabric that has so yes, many right. weak spots that's in right. it yeah. that it any and and all of um it's all under tension it's like poking a hole in a balloon right this balloon is this very in, integrated thing until there is one weak spot right, right, right. and then the tension of that of that rubber canopy rips the thing apart sure. if you ever watch a slow mo of a balloon popping yeah and that's where we are in the food production so, system so so when i and when i think about that i think the my limited knowledge is in soil fertility. So, so, and this is I'm getting from Wendell Berry mostly, but mm -hmm. basically, when we do monocultures of corn and soy yeah. and mm -hmm. use fertilizers, yep. Yep. you said mm -hmm. salt based fertilizers, um, what we do is we just use up the land until oh, it's yeah. not usable. So, right. insofar as we're about that practice, um, there's obvious collapse. <laughs> Built into that because right. it's not it's not sustainable. As soon as we stop, and we don't everything that, stops. We don't feel that because America is so big that we really right. managed and to so wealthy and so well. But because we can pull it from all countries all over the world. And presently, we can also throw away forty percent of our food and still be eating too much. Yeah, that's wild to me. That's yeah, crazy. That's but what else do you it's see? Evil. So besides soil fertility, what do you see as the weak spots that okay. lead you to say, okay, this food system is okay. not going to be around well, for transportation. Long. Assume, assume yeah, if you assume right. that we are always going to be able to truck stuff all around the world at the rate we're doing, you're not thinking about cause and effect, right? You that That's an assumption that's made in, in total ignorance. Um, if you assume that we're going to be clever enough to just keep on coming up with a technological fix for that problem, you're also making an act of faith in a God that isn't a God, which is our cleverness. Um, I think part of the problem with our vision, like our being able to envision the fragility of the system we're existing in is that we th we don't have a historic sense of how utterly strange the rate of change in the last 200 years has mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. and that we aren't living on – we aren't presently thriving in a system that's been around since the Industrial Revolution. We are presently – at the apex of a fast-moving train uh, uh, that's uh, only holding itself together. Probably like, what, 70 years? In yep. real time, a right. great experiment. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, for instance, people say, well, you say the food's going to make us sick. I'm not sick. I'm 45, and I'm just fine. I've been eating yep. this food. Folks, you're not eating what you were eating when you were growing up. Yep. The food system has been changing in real time over and over and over again. So that if you're my age, I'm 58, your life pretty much spans, <laughs> sorry, your life pretty much spans a period of constant agricultural change. Sure. Um, the methods have changed. The materials have changed. At this point, we have genetically modified crops, which people are not being tested before you eat them. <laughs> I had a professor at the university ask me one time, and I thought it was a good question. He said, that's your contention. Why would the government let it reach you know, how how has it gotten into our food system untested? And that is a very simple matter to research. And I won't I won't take the time now to talk about how is it that we have a food system now largely perched on this pile of genetically modified corn and soy without having any good reason to think that that's safe. Mm -hmm. You can go do that research. It's out there. That, that's the other thing I just wanted to just throw in. I'm sorry, but is that we are not going to convince people in this meeting sure, sure, that sure. it's going to fall apart. But go out and do the research. That's right. 
There is a but, lot of stuff now out there that is pointing to the same thing. But we should be able to, to like, um, at least fathom the big picture, the big issues and say, oh, sure. Why do I think that's OK? Yeah. Why do I think that the food I'm eating today is perfectly fine because I happen to sit here and I'm 45 years old or however old I am? And I'm assuming that, hey, if I'm not dead yet, it must be OK. Well, that's not a valid, um, you know, sort of. Uh, rock to tie yourself to because it's not the fact. Right. You're not eating as you've been eating. Right, right, you're not. Right, right, you're right. continuing not yeah. to eat. Um, another brilliant man in this community has said to me, you keep referring to our national ill health. What are you basing that on? Longevity is, is at its greatest that we know of since um, the early biblical days, right? Well, that was true till recently. It started to, it started to yeah, decline, right, right. right? I know that. And... That argument also falls down, not just because we're seeing that decline, although that's a good argument, um, that we are prolonging life is not uh, proof that we are healthy, I'm right? Sure, yeah. People on, you can keep people alive on machines for a long time. And to argue that longevity is proof of health is like saying that if you're a triathlon runner and you get hit by a truck, you were less healthy than the person <laughs> who's been in an iron lung for 60 years, sure. right? It just doesn't, it doesn't hold right, water right, as right, soon right. as you examine it. Um, but if you look at any, any, um, you can go to the CDC, you can look elsewhere, but well, you look at any look statistics. Community. That's right. Forget statistics. Right. Look around you. When we were young, autism was a word. You hardly ever ran into anything that looked like what we call autism now and see all the time. When we were young, and, and they'll claim that any, oh it was there, but I they weren't in any, not my yeah, yeah. experience. Yeah. No, yeah. that's yeah. not my. In experience. any Catholic school, every grade, you know, so you had two two classrooms of thirty kids each, so sixty kids at any age group. In those sixty kids, you'd have maybe a couple of boys who couldn't sit still. A couple of kids who were genetically predisposed to plumpness, mm -hmm. um, n maybe no food allergies. You might have one kid who couldn't eat strawberries. Oh, yeah, food um, allergies are crazy. Just let, let's, let's be serious, people. The national health is in acute decline. Any one of these and a bunch of other issues that are the, the, the fabric of this bubble that is our, our food system... If any one of them hits crisis, you can see the whole thing come to a halt. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. W why do we think it's not? Because we have a, a, a religion called, you know, I don't know, Americanism, modernism, something that says, I have faith that somehow that's all taken care of because I've never gone to the store and it wasn't there. So right. we're right. fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so wh whether you're looking at from the point of view of soil health or food provisioning or where are the farmers who are going to grow it or how are um, going to transport it, is this food good for us or right? Mm -hmm. Any of the whether you're looking at any of those questions or simply the effect that food is having on us, right. we're looking at a collapsing food system. Now yeah. that shouldn't be a reason for us to get um, to go into um, what do we call it? When we want to dig a hole and hide in it? Uh, Sounds mentality, descriptive. I mean, a, a, a <laughs> siege mentality. Yeah, is, that's not, yeah. That's, that doesn't mean we, we go to siege mentality. It means we look at w not what's wrong with this system as in how can I tinker with it and fix it, yeah, yeah. but why am I dependent on a food system like that to begin with? Right, right, right. No, and I think that's actually the most convincing because obviously you're right. You can go into research on any particular question of health. I mean, you're right. Any, like, from obesity to heart disease to cancers to uh, loss of fertility yeah, I and mean, yeah. like it's just right, right. it goes know, on and on and on and of course the argument will always be there that it's a result of more research as opposed to a result of a change in our health and i don't think there's a way around that besides just say well let's keep researching right well the <laughs> other thing is point, that people uh, our age yeah. have seen you know we're, we're approaching three generations yeah, at yeah, this yeah. point so you can tell me oh no we're just we just are identifying more kids with autism, yeah, yeah. and I'll say you're wrong. Right, 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 right. That's our experience. No, I mean this is the this is one of those those tough limitations of science that it refuses to recognize as its own effect. I mean, it, it's correct to say, you know, there's a certain uncertainty principle that it has an effect on what it studies. And mm -hmm, so, it starts studying, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we can you know, peer things into existence. But yeah, it, and it's entirely unwilling to 
rely on history, like in the sense of memory. It, it won't do right, that. Like right, it didn't happen right, unless right, we can show. Right, right, so right. you're kind of at an impasse with the scientifically. Right. This is a faith minded. thing. Yeah, so yeah. the so the priests of scientism say we're healthier than we've ever been. And I'm supposed to... A World Health Organization did something really interesting in regards to this. They uh, So one of the ways they um, sort of calculate male fertility is by sperm count. Mm -hmm. um, and so like concentration of the number of sperm cells. Mm -hmm. um, and they have been noticing a decline in this, mm. right? Um, as everything seems to be. But what they actually did, I don't remember the year they did this, is they changed... The normal concentration. Ah, absolutely. So now it's right. Not it's a like a lot of in our recent <laughs> recent national hysteria, health yeah. disease hysteria. We did a bunch of redefining terms mm -hmm. so that we could go on saying what sounded right to our narrative. Well, using longevity is a great example of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a notion of health as the right. human thriving where he is. Right. Uh, that's not going to work for us because we're not. You right. know, we can't eat bread anymore. Mm -hmm. right. sick. Right. Like well, that. and I and I, it's it becoming less and less hard to convince somebody that the food oh. system is. Uh, we don't have to try very hard anymore. Sure. Okay. People are already on board with. So that. then, then what I want to say is this: if it seems, I, I think the 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 broadest view to take of it is for me one of ownership and resil and resilience because. Mm -hmm. You know, collapse and catastrophe is never guaranteed. Right. But what we know, just sociologically, is that it happens when there's a lack of distribution within any system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, when communication is distributed between the people communicating, there's no danger of massive identity fraud. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But once it is in the hands of companies, so data, what we give off, is concentrated into one hand, then on the one hand, we're all enjoying a convenience because we're all using social media and such. And on the other hand, we are more exposed to disaster because that which is built up can be broken down. Mm -hmm. So we build up all of our language, our communications, the words we say, the things we buy, our, you know, who we are in mm -hmm. some capacity, and we give it into the hands of a few wealthy people. And then we then experience what the disaster, right? We experience large identity leaks, large scale mm -hmm. hacking mm -hmm. events mm -hmm. with um, you know, whether bank accounts or or just identity, large scale manipulation of I mean, they say manipulation of elections. What it means is they just have easy access to what we think and they can post on Facebook mm -hmm. to make us think things. Mm -hmm. um, and we are all, and of course, our, our response to this is more technology. We need the regulation by other technological machines of right. these technological machines right. that have gathered up into a single point. How do we create more layers of protection? So we, mm -hmm. we and, mm -hmm. and, this is just a description of atheism on its practical level. What I mean yeah. is simple. Like when our answer is always what can man do next to assure that he doesn't fall, we are just saying that at some level there's no place for penance, there's no place for conversion, and there's no place for God. The trust is that right. man will figure it out. Right. Well, and it's so, also atheism yeah. in the sense that it looks at a mechanistic world that needs us to tinker with it sure, yeah. to make it worth yeah, work the way, yeah, materialist. The work in ways that will further our ends. And so I think that when we talk about collapse, it's it's just good to look at this as a, you know, as a structure that you can't really get away from because it's the way the world built is built. I mean, I look at the I look at the Bible, right? Um where what is constantly condemned is the amassment of power or property into a single point. The book of Isaiah says, woe to he who buys house upon house until he is left alone in the land. And they're not just saying like greed is bad because it's, you know, some kind of moral stain on your soul, which it is, but they're saying that you make your people vulnerable when you concentrate power. So with real estate, it's very obvious, you know, when you have, a real estate market that's based on wealthy people buying up hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of houses and then using them as commodities for trade. Right. Right. You you are very vulnerable to collapse precisely because all of that land is concentrated in the hand of one mm -hmm. of one mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. You know, who's the largest owner of farmland today? Is it Bill Gates? Bill Gates, right? Yeah. So you have I keep asking myself what he's doing. Largest with it. individual owner of, of Yeah, farmland. right. Yeah, I yeah, wonder yeah. what he's doing with it. 
or intense. I mean, but that's the thing. He's using it as a commodity, that's like right. the same way that's that right. he can buy shares and that's right. something. That's so, right. so, okay. So the point is that this is a repetitive reality. God has warned us about it since Babel. That's and probably before, definitely before then. But mm-hmm. Babel is really clear. It's like, okay, so we said we are going to not distribute. We're going to instead stay in one place and we're going to build up. We're going to build all, all of our human ingenuity is going to go to stack on top mm-hmm. more in mm-hmm. the same place, more in the same place, mm-hmm. more in the same place, right? The destruction of Babel was, was a, a great example of the natural consequence, even as it was a divine intervention, right. because Catholics don't really make that divine nature distinction that a lot of people mm-hmm. do, mm-hmm. Um, to show that that which is built up is going to fall. And mm-hmm. the conventional wisdom, right? Pride comes before the fall is in fact structurally built into reality mm-hmm. where there's pride, the amassment of power into one place, there is a fall. So what you're seeing in the food system could be looked at in any amassment, right? That without distribution. Oh yeah. It when it puts when you put power into a few hands, it's much easier for those hands to fumble. That's right. Whereas when it's distributed on a scale on a, on a large scale, then you know where there's someone who drops the ball here, it's not the death of, of right. the whole. So to me, you know, collapse is just just sort of biblically assured. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And structurally assured. It's sociologically built in. Assured, um, yeah. Even if you yeah. simply look at at the world's physical limitations, yeah. if you collect too much in one place. Mm-hmm. Sickness, catastrophe ensues. It's just going to happen, and yeah. that's what we're doing, literally and figuratively. All yeah, the time. no, I mean the goal of of any company within the world today is is indefinite and that's infinite right. growth. Right, infinite growth. Now, of course, infinite growth doesn't exist in nature. Right. We just we call it at some point we call it rot, but even that's not infinite. At some point we call it we call it disease. Disease, yeah, yeah like mm-hmm. the uncontrolled growth. But mm-hmm. within man, we praise it as his ingenuity and his cleverness. That's right. But the the trouble with it, so you know, I think about like lab grown meat, and we think yep. of this as a purely um, well, isn't this an odd, strange thing that we've thought up next? No, we didn't think about it next. It's just a logical step to the greater centralization of meat production. Right. It's because we think of things like putting all the cows in one bubble that we think, well, right. if they're already there, why even have the cow? Let's just get the That's meat. Right. That's right. 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 And and we look at this like it's okay, it's gonna solve all these hunger problems, which is insane to me. It's like the problem is obviously not production. Right. We have already outproduced. You said we were throwing right. away forty percent of right. our food. That's right. That's right. Production has already been solved. That's if you want right. to look at it in that that's way, right. it's distribution that's, that's the problem. Right. You Absolutely. think greater centralization of meat production right. is now going to solve problems of world? No, hunger? but it'll make somebody really rich. It'll Mark. make someone really rich. The the ends have changed. What characterizes our age? What characterizes this society that we're in? Is that those good ends that we want, we want beautiful places, we want to eat. We want It's community. not that they're gone. It's that they have been subordinated and only achieved through other people's desires for money, for this abstract right. real, right. which is really a desire for power. And so we and, and that's what makes it so difficult to discern because we think we're living in a world in which those ends are, are somehow primary because for most people, they are, right? For most people, what do you want? I want a family. I want community. Right. Right. I want to eat well. I want delicious mm-hmm. food. I want mm-hmm. leisure. I want a good job that's fulfilling. And, 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 I want these and this goods. is the I want problem we see with some people yeah. trying to go to the farm is they're trying to make the farm turn into cash. Yeah, right. And so that if I can buy cash, because my cash is what provides me with everything. That's yeah. right. Human my, beings my do vault, associate. Disney World trip, my, my clothes. Everything is yeah. cash based. Our security rides in our back pocket, right? It's yeah, our wallet. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's how we feel strong and safe. Yeah, our front pocket now because it's all on our phone. Oh, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's... for us, we have checked out of a lot of that yeah, system. Right, right, right. And we have said, we're going to look around our farm. When we see cash going off the farm, yeah, yeah. we're going to say, how can I provide that thing? Which is why I want to describe your activity as radical because, again, one of the biggest things to get over is the is the sort of psyop that's been played on what the does farmer. that mean psyop? psychological operation it means okay. like oh, i'm being too literal okay. it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. people accuse the cia of doing this yes. right okay, okay. Gotcha. gotcha but basically like a very deliberate change in opinion that's happened within our mass society mm-hmm. whereby 
the the farmer in his subsistent mode, which is not a job but a human vocation that we That's all right. share, right. Mm-hmm. has been turned into this uh, sort of again an emaciated figure that's scratching the dirt. Right. 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 Um, now, now, so we can't see the radicalness of this because we see it as a lifestyle choice. And then we ask, well, why would you choose this lifestyle? And then we're threatened by it at the same time because we see it somehow because we have an inkling of this as a negation of all the other things that, you know, we want to be lawyers, we want to be doctors, we want to be... And and there is a certain amount of negation. I got up this morning at 5.30 to (laughs) milk a cow. Yeah, yeah. And it's cold. And a few mornings ago, it was six degrees in the morning to do that. But if I don't do that, if I don't milk that cow every day, that cow will stop lactating. And this is why... So there is a change in lifestyle that happens. But one has to say, is it maybe a better lifestyle? (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And And it's... It's radically destructive of the centralized powers of this oh, earth. Oh, they hate it because because you don't need them. Because it's it doesn't right. need them. We don't because have it to go them. to the grocery store. What do the, what yeah. sends everybody to the grocery store? Eggs and milk. Sure. And then they buy all the other stuff because those are the two things that I can't hold for. They a can't long store time. for a long time. Sure, right. Sure, sure. So so. I don't need those things. Right. I provide those things for myself. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to go to the grocery store. I can choose to go to the grocery store for some of the things that we might like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't have to go there. And, this, and that right. uh, that really bothers. And I, and I should say, like, this is not... The, the reason I bring this up as a kind of radical undermining of tyrannical, man-made, and atheistic systems is because what you're doing is a repetition of what Christians did within the Roman Empire. So it's often... Right. It's often misunderstood because we think of the conversion of the Roman Empire as if it wasn't the Romans converting. We think of mm-hmm. it as like the Christians sort right. of came. Right, right, like, right, no, right, no, 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 no. Right, People right. Those right. were the Romans. Yes. Yeah. What threatened the powers of of Rome, which mm-hmm. if there's ever an example of like centralized power mm-hmm. uh used for its own sake and for really, I mean it's more of a military emphasis rather than our commercial emphasis, but I don't really I don't make a large distinction there. You know why I split hairs. Mm-hmm. Um, but, okay, what was the conversion of the Roman Empire? Well, it was not, they were not threatened by Christians as believing something different. The Roman Empire was based, I mean, if on the most, I mean, it really was the most tolerant society in a certain respect mm-hmm. that you can imagine. Mm-hmm. You've got a God, you've got a particular religious worship, and come on in, join the Roman Empire. I mean, well, we're going to kill you and then you will join the Roman mm-hmm. Empire, but you can keep your God. Put it in the put it in the group of gods. You can offer your sacrifices. You can offer mm-hmm. your worship. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just expands. They can take any belief system. Oh, you're a Gnostic. Come on in. Oh, you're a Jew. Come on in. You're a Christian. Whatever. It doesn't matter until you no longer need that's right the rewards of the empire itself. So right. what really freaked them out and why they actually started calling the Christians atheists, uh, and when they refused to worship to the gods, was that they were building community that didn't require the structures of the Roman Empire. So we don't we don't. We don't we read the Acts of the Apostles and we don't necessarily see the consequences. What does it say? They lived in common, that they took care of the needs of each other, mm-hmm. okay, that they all worked with their hands. So mm-hmm. so Paul talks about this, like those who do not right, right. Uh, you work. You see it several times <laughs> in, uh, in the um, epistles. They, they developed structures of law and authority that did not descend from the emperor. So you had bishops that were judges within communities. Um where, I mean, they consider this a transcending of the law in a certain respect into the life of grace. But the point is that it wasn't that you had this Christian community, but then when things really go bad, you have to go to the cops. Right. You have to go That's to the right. Roman courts. It was, we can do that. That's we right. can judge amongst ourselves. I mean, this is one of right. Christ's point about the judicial power. He That's says, right. you know, if you're on your way to the judge. Settle with your settle brother before you get with, there. with your brother right now or else the judge <laughs> is going to what? Violently coerce you into prison. Uh-huh. He's not just saying this as like, I mean, some, we read Christ and we're like, oh, thanks for the life advice. I guess I should do that. It's like, no, no, no. He's describing the radical independence from systems of power right. that are based ultimately mm-hmm. on man and, and can not we God. imagine a system now where you didn't go to Walmart? I mean, in Steubenville, but otherwise, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, where you said, yeah, yeah. I can imagine need, it in a lot need of Walmart. places. Yeah, we don't need those things. But the it. only yeah. way that that's going to happen 
is if the needs that Walmart is providing yes. are provided by my community. Or are eliminated because they're yeah, stupid. eliminated. Yes. That's right. But also that I'm providing Which is why the Christian revolution never comes without penance. Yeah. So people want to have it. You know, it's not that what happened is the Christians became independent because as they were, or, or became independent because they were like building the same kind of world just owned by Christians. I mean, right. the they, right. it, it also, the reason why people think it's a sort of, uh, gloomy revolution sometimes like you have the pagans with their you know beautiful world and then the christians come and like you're all sinning um there's a certain truth to that because the first phase is often the destruction of the things we don't need that make us slaves mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. no you mm -hmm. don't need to be buying mm -hmm. plastic crap no right. you right, don't right, right, right. need to have right, right. this it hurts addiction to that it hurts food. it's yeah. like um it's like uh breaking an addiction right there's right, a yeah. There's that painful stage that you go through to get to a better place. I mean, I mean, we've we've toyed with this challenge. I mean, we are basically food. I mean, independent. Yeah, food uh -huh. independent. Yeah. But what if we said, okay, let's not go to Lowe's. Yeah, sure. Let's not go to Walmart. Let's not go to those places. Yeah, that would be very hard yeah, for us right now. I mean. We still when, buy. Yeah, we still buy building equipment, building equipment. Yeah. and a few I've spices. I've got a sawmill, and I've got wood. Yeah. And I could mill my own wood. Yeah. So what have I said to myself? Okay, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to work also with my community. And this is, again, yeah. one of the things that's very exciting about what we feel like is starting to happen in Steubenville. Yeah. Is the community is getting built. Yeah. Where people can say, I want to go to Mark Nelson, or I want to go to Mark Barnes, or I want to go to Brian Burke. And, and I want to get out of the medical system. And we need to say to our doctor, I want to help you get out of that medical yeah, yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. I'll support you. And so we start creating this community that's outside of yeah. the big community. You know, it, it, now, I think yeah. we're gonna, it's not just Rome. Uh, the United States oh, is yeah. going to have a real hard time with the fact that we think we can unplug. And they're going to yeah. attack us and they're going to call us. I mean, it's what the Amish do some. Yeah, but the Amish have have they've done something that only they could do, which is they've basically been a, they've been isolated for long enough that their very isolation has become a commodity that we can all accept. Isn't that yeah. funny? Catholics yeah. can't do it because it would right. be a change. But for us, we say, "Oh, the Amish—they're the exception." Yeah, the, th the other reason <laughs> we can't do it is that, that we just... have to be the universal church. Right? Yeah, you convert yeah. the whole world. Right. right. There's not, another group yeah. that I've just bumped into, and. Uh, I, I think they're kind of interesting. I haven't done a lot of research into them, but it's the Heritage Homestead. They're out of Texas, and it's a group of people who have said, we are going to live intentionally in community. Mm -hmm. Now, we've also bumped into it a little bit in Pittsburgh, yeah. is the people who Bruder say, or... uh, we're going to, it was a farming or a or a food group wasn't it and they oh, said okay yeah so if okay. if something if you want something and our group provides it yeah. please use us yeah. first it's yeah. a really large personal membership association that's yeah, yeah, yeah. been These in clubs. pennsylvania and, for and 15 we're years see, or something. there's a group uh that's doing a rogue food and and joel salton's involved with this a rogue food group and what they are really exploring and i can't remember what the anachronism was but it is clubs PMAs, PMAs, personal membership associations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are clubs yeah. that people are joining and saying, I want to get out of the food system. Yeah. And I also want to get out of the nanny system so that I'm going to butcher my own food. Right, right, right. And I don't care whether you think it's safe or not. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm going to trust my farmer. And if I determine that he is not being a careful, good farmer, I won't go back to him. Right, right, of course. But you don't have to be my nanny right, and tell right. me what's safe and not safe. I'm perfectly capable of doing that. Uh, in in Rhode Island, I, we think we've heard that they have a system now where if you, as consumer, go to the farm and you buy Rhode from, Island? Was Maine? It Rhode Island? Maybe it's Maine. Maine. Where they said if you go to the farm, that the government has no business being a part of right. that relationship mm -hmm. so i can buy whatever i want from whatever farmer i want to mm -hmm. and i'm going to i'm going to accept this the yeah, risk yeah. that goes with that well it, and i think it's important to look at the history of this um because the reason government regulation exists is it, it's the 
stepsister of industrial production. Yes, it so is. So what I mean is, okay, they we say pre- it's safety. Well, right, but what I mean is that it, it's not even that it's completely mm, malicious, although it's obviously very corrupt right now. Yeah. Um, you know, when you produce things at this scale, like you said, that's right. Formaldehyde in the milk. That's right. It's a big problem. So, but you need big scale solutions, right? So government. And, you know, people like uh, G.K. Chesterton have always made this point that, you know, big government and big business, they're seen as somehow like if you have one, you don't have the other, but they need each other. Yeah. And especially, I think, in the relationship that big business needs big government, because when they create a national problem, you need national solutions. And so, of course, the turn is to the government and it builds up from there. So now, yeah, we have, for instance, what I think is an obviously tyrannical, especially in our state, uh, regulation of milk, of raw yeah, milk. Milk, milk <laughs> is the perfect example. Um, okay. Now, it's it's too easy to say, oh, they're just sticking their noses where they don't belong. No, no, no. What happens first is the massive production of, of milk on scales and for the sake of cash mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. has led to horrifying conditions That's right. for animals and obviously for right. the people right. that are there. We would not recommend anyone drinking mm. raw milk yeah. that came out of that system. Right. So mm. so what I'm saying is the, the government responds to the industrial practices and then becomes itself an obstacle to anyone who wants to have a pre-industrial practice because their mode is, in, in its best, most charitable reading, is the protection of people from right. industrial practice. Right, right. But the, in reality, yeah. too, the other flip side of that yeah. is that they are protect. Now, I'm an industrial, and it costs me a tremendous yeah. amount of money to do that. Yeah. The, that old farmer over there who's just milking one or two cows... It it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be fair for him to be able to do it on the cheap. So it is protection, even though it's oh, safe. Yeah. So it's definitely right. protecting. Oh yeah, Regu- the big guys. regulation as maintenance of the status quo is awesome. Right. So That's like, right. o- only only the rich can afford to. Oh yeah, provide milk at this point, right. like at, at that scale. Right. right. Okay, so to to just back up a little bit because I think I think we agree um, so much that it can lead to. <laughs> Um, walking down roads that That's right. I don't, I no longer know who's following. But mm-hmm. the um, what what we were discussing is, and, and what you keep turning to, is community. Yeah, as the source through which we weather yes. the coming food collapse. And I and I want to just point at this to make a distinction between what I would just characterize as like the Catholic vision as opposed to a conservative or libertarian mm-hmm. vision of of uh, independence because what you're not saying is that there's some value in independence for its own sake in the sense of um, individual independence. Like I don't need anyone. It is true. We should not be in a position of need or slavery to tyrannical systems. That's one truth. Mm -hmm. It is also true that the human person is born needy that's right in a community and only solves any of his problems in and through community mm-hmm. what, what mm-hmm. does wendell berry keep what its neighbor yeah neighbor, its you? neighbor yeah and i have an obligation to my neighbor yeah that goes beyond just that i can provide for myself right, right. and this is i think the what frustrates me often about like the because homesteading has become sort of popular for you too Mm-hmm. But often, what is popular? Like, what are we watching? Because it's all just TV. So, what TV shows are we watching now? Well, yeah. now we're watching and enjoying people who are proud of their independence, yeah. who are not challenging the social order itself, because what uh, they've done is found a lifestyle that can be accounted for and understood, and makes no difference ultimately, right? Uh, and you can see this sometimes in their buying practices, like the way that they use still industrial produced inputs in order to get the right. independent. So we don't, we don't, lifestyle. we don't have the means of watching those programs. So we don't know exactly what you're it's talking just, about. It's but... just that homesteaders are trend, trend. They've all they've been trending for a while, but it's right, right. My, my point is simply this: the the. Um... <sighs> okay, so maybe yeah. an example would be like I know there's there are people out there who will. Um, sort of go radically off grid, sure. but where they transfer, you know, what that actually means isn't, um, you know, the Amish are off grid, essentially, or at least in sort of. theory. Yeah. And at one time, the Amish were a community yeah. that was off grid. 
but they were off grid because they didn't need the things that the grid was doing yeah. and they could provide all the goods and needs yeah, and yeah, services yeah, they yeah, had. Yeah. And now I understand there are programs of people who are off grid where what it's really about is how I, in my isolated, you know, island here, uh, have the gadgets and the bells and whistles yeah. to do all these cool things yep. without having wires. Got wires bringing electricity to me from off my farm. It's really sort of insignificant and it's certainly not co community yeah. building. It's or, not or, about that. Or the other thing that I'm thinking of is there is a way with enough money to almost instantly have a independent lifestyle in the sense of not relying on people yeah. for various yeah. energy. Yeah, except for if you're using the money, what's the money doing for you? Well, the money itself is is the point. Like, no, no, no. Because money is an interaction with other people right. so that... And often, how do I get that money in the first place? Well, I, I do it through the use of the very things that I'm now rejecting. Oh, yeah, right. right. I, love, right. I love like um, proponents of a simple lifestyle right. who are funding that lifestyle via online presence and mm -hmm. and exaggerated so social media i think yeah, yeah, okay yeah. something's not weird i'm not <laughs> sure what's wrong here but which is similar to say that when we talk about resilience we're not talking about a negative attribute we're talking about what happens when catholics become catholic what happens when they convert is that they start to build social orders that do not need tyrannical provision of their lives mm -hmm. because they have it already not because they live in a state of reaction to it, but in the That's sense right. that it increasingly appears as irrelevant. And you see this all the time. It's like, you know, when I, and this is across the board, like to go into any corporate um, uh, national chain in order to get any particular thing is to be the object of a regime of advertisement, of money, manipulation. To use of investment within markets that you don't even know you're invested mm -hmm. in. Right. Um, and we all know this, right? This is just, this is why I think most people's shoulders kind of go up every time they yeah, walk into right. a Walmart or something. That's right. The creation of places where your shoulders aren't doing that is sort of what we're about. And it's, it's because you simply can provide those things through the power of community, um, which is, which fills each other's needs, mm -hmm. which looks at, which understands the human person as lacking, as needing. I mean, Adam was not made independent. The whole thing about the reasons uh, that Adam was immortal was because of the provision. The and, and this is a really important oh, Catholic that's point. A great point. He did not have immortality by nature and then lose it, as if God created an immortal being. Then sin happened, and He says, "Up, oh, we're going to take away that and make you something else." Mm -hmm. No, no, no. He didn't have it by nature. He had it as a gift. What is being taught there? That man is the person who, even in what we consider his natural mode, is only what he is through the gift through of community. God and through the provision of, of, of others. Mm -hmm. So what resists, I think, the collapse that you're, that you're speaking of is at the same time, in the same breath, it's to say it's simply the kind of life that we should have been building in the That's first right. place. The and, collapse and, is not the reason for farming right. the way we farm <laughs> any more than we started from. We did not begin, we didn't move to the country and begin growing our food and then, and then in the course of growing it, seek for more and more beautiful and natural ways to do that growing. We didn't do it because we were afraid of something. And we didn't do it because we wanted to build a, a bomb shelter and live inside of it. Mm -hmm. We did it because it was lovely. It was fun. We were drawn to it. it we were vocationally suited to it. And um, it, it, would be, it would be a sad come down for a beautiful lifestyle if we were to present it as only something to dive for right before the disaster strikes, you know, like, um, this, this is, this is your lifeboat. This is your, your, um, uh, your life preserver ring to grab for right before the boat goes down. No. How much fun are we having on this boat right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. How free do we feel on this boat? How, how, um, how much room is there for us to live as individuals, to allow our children to grow up as themselves and not as products of well, a of an industrial system. Well, it's almost but, it's all... well, and I and I think that it's it's a choice. What if you said? What if we all said, "I'm not going to go to Walmart. I'm not going to do that thing. I'm going to find a way to find this thing, and not just on my farm, mm -hmm. but I'm going to find it in Toronto. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to find it in my little community, and I'm going to seek out the resources that I have, and there's probably tons of resources in yeah, there that yeah. I have no clue That's are right. there. They're for sure there. And right? if I simply said, I'm going to challenge myself to do that, and wouldn't it be great yeah. if all the Walmarts went out of business yeah. because... And not because we're building the super Walmart called Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Or Amazon. If I say I'm right, not right, going right. to order anything on Amazon, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to try and find it. And and, and it is it is more than I'm going to find another way to do that. I'm going to do it through Dollar General stores. Right, no, right, no, 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 no. It's through my yeah. community, the people who live around yeah. me. I'm going to try and well, right. and two two things immediately suggest themselves is that. Number one, it's a lot like a meal. You could describe eating as staving off death. Mm, there and, you go. That's a great comparison. In, in fact, I think people do when, uh -huh. when you get down to like a biological. like. And that's even know. how we eat, you know, like yeah. as we assort this much protein, this much well, carb. And, and we want to go and we try, we we try and cut out all pill. the fat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So you can see it as that and you would be wrong, but it would still create a coherent world mm -hmm. because it yes. does in fact keep you Stay from dying. from right. starvation. That's okay. Right. But anyone who's had a meal. Yes. Knows that that's not what's going on. That rather not dying is a fruit of some good that's being pursued for its own sake. And when I think more and more about that, I really think it's communion with the world itself. So like to eat is to become the place. Mm -hmm. So a love for your place naturally indicates a desire to become it in your body mm -hmm. so that you become, you know, the w wisdom of Solomon, it describes man as a compaction, a compaction of blood. Uh, and the oh, pleasure of marriage. <laughs> That's what he calls it. I he don't says, remember that. Okay, so a compaction, so a condensing, a making thick. Uh -huh. What is man? Man is a making thick of the world, right? We're a compaction uh -huh. of the world. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, in the tradition, we talk about this as man is a microcosm, and sometimes we mean that very theoretically, but it is what is happening. Like we are turning the world into ourselves. Yeah. So why do I bring this up? Not Not to just be poetic, but because you're describing the kind of life that at its very basis involves a communion with the world where you're becoming the world, affirming it as good precisely because you're saying it's so good that I would like to be it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not abstractly, not saying I want to be a little bit of South America and a little bit of California mm -hmm. right. in the winter right. and a little right. bit of this mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. But you're saying this that I see, that I love, where my kids are playing, I am this, right? It's a very, I think it's a very maternal reality that's in men and women right to like be your home to be a home mm -hmm, to be mm -hmm. a place you know because at least in my experience moms are are places yes, right. <laughs> much yes. more than men can right. experience right. that okay right. still being poetic i'm still trying to get get out of poetics keep on jumping back in um when that is the ground level mm -hmm. of what are we doing we're enjoying the world yeah then you're back in Eden in, in so far as you're there, mm -hmm. right? Because obviously there's the fall still there, right? right? So, right. but in so far as you're doing what you're doing to enjoy the world, you are living as Adam, mm -hmm. um, you're living as Eve. And then the kind of structures that are built up on the basis of a fundamental enjoyment, of a, a decision to enjoy and to say, mm -hmm. this is a good mm -hmm. world and I want to be it, those structures are ones that are productive they make the world better abundant and bring people into it so community yep. is not the thing that develops because you're resisting an anti-community that's right right which is the only way like postmodern thinkers can think about it you know structures of solidarity uh that resist the patriarchy mm -hmm. or the capitalist mm -hmm. or whatever okay that's lame it's like no no, no. those resistances happen because we're becoming holy um and then what we have is the natural, because I mean, this is sort of a basic metaphysical principle is the good diffuses itself. So, so what it means for something to, good, to be good, as opposed to just be, is that it, it is abundant, it offers itself, it's desirable, it draws people into itself. So when you look at the world as good, then the impulse of the human heart is to diffuse it to others. So now like in the, the worship of god through the affirmation of the world is fundamentally good 
the desire to spread that is a yes. natural step. Right. It's not mm -hmm. like a decision, right. like, shall we build a community? Right. You know what right, I mean? Right. It's right. like, well, no, no, no. Treating the world like this necessitates community. Because if you're going to say, I'm going to treat the land and make it better, then you have to teach your children how to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to reach out to people that have what you don't have in order to be, um, in order to make that Another life reason possible. that you end up doing it is that um, when a family yeah. makes the decision to live not in in a close assortment of houses type community, but moves out onto some land a little bit further away, um, unless you're going to let that become isolationist, and that has a whole host of problems associated sure. with it, and I don't consider it desirable, you're going to begin to try, you're going to have the need for community that can't be met simply by associating with people whose experiences are so widely different from yours in their set. So for instance, you can't just take your town, your country kids, haul them to town and put them on a soccer team sure. um, and say, okay, that was our community being met because the, the child untutored knows that being in community has more levels than just showing up and playing soccer. Right, right, right. And he will feel within himself the differences between himself and those other children that arise from a difference in experience, a difference in, in um, the way the world looks to him. Mm -hmm. And he won't get community out of that experience. Yeah. And he'll either want to eschew, leave the things that make him weird and go be like the town kid, right, you know, right, and, right. and forget about the country setting or... Um, he will be uncomfortable as a country kid in the town setting. So yeah. we build community as we as we move on to the land in these in on, on parcels small enough that we go on being not you know isolated in our thousands of acres, right, right, right. but are managing small pieces of land. Well, we're going to build community automatically, only if only to satisfy our need to have others like us. Sort of Adam going, sure. you know, like. I've looked at all the animals and none of yeah, these yeah. is like me. Yeah, yeah. We have that same response as country people. So we do build community yeah. automatically as we, as but, we and, and I think change. another I don't really, know if I like hijacked that to say that. No, no, I think no, another sure. really important step is that we work together. Sure. I mean, I have watched with my own family and the look, we there's about five families that get together and butcher together. And it is one of these fabulous you know, the kids been doing all it for 20 look years. forward to it. Mm -hmm. The jokes are all lousy and <laughs> They tell silly. the same bad jokes every year. Yeah. and But it's the same with bringing in hay. Mm -hmm. It's the same with... The same with digging the, the potatoes. It's the same right. with... Um, there are a lot the of work. community jobs and there will be more going on. One of the things I'd like to say in this talk is that um, Steubenville had the seeds for this in 1990. Um, when we came here and there were already people sort of making um, move to the land noises. And for whatever reason, it didn't happen very much. There were some abortive attempts um, and then a lot of talk that didn't ever germinate into an attempt to live in the country. And, and our need and our desire was, was ancient in us and came out came out of partly our own childhood experiences as kids whose grandfathers farmed, whose fathers owned farms and we lived on them and took care of them. Um, not a lot happened in the 1990s. I mean, we bought land in the country and began our journey to how are we supposed to do this thing called um, live in and with and through nature and get food out of that process and make it the land better as we do it so it can go on doing that indefinitely until God calls us all home. Um, but in the last few years, especially, I feel as though the 20 and 30 somethings, that set sounds like people who couldn't be fooled about what their futures promised them. Uh, I think Our, a lot of them did buy into. I know, but other, I'm seeing the ones who and were. Then they, and then they said, this is, this is not doing it. Maybe that's yeah. what I mean. That, um, and they said, there's got to be a better way. The evidence was too strong against it. And so I yeah. feel as though here in Steubenville, in Jefferson County, Ohio, in this part of the country, and probably in a lot of other I places, but I'm seeing it places. here. Um, there are people checking out, not in a, in a siege mentality way, 
but are checking out because they're just dissatisfied. I'm yeah. not happy with what I'm being yeah. offered. It's not, it's not, you can't kid me mm-hmm. anymore that I'm going to just go on getting endlessly prosperous until I retire at 65 and can mm-hmm. spend every winter in Florida playing golf. And I don't want that anyway. Yeah. And so you people, you young people are making some really extraordinary choices to move to Jefferson County, Ohio is yeah. De facto to say, I will no longer enter into the competition of the world that says I need to try and, I'll borrow an Opus Dei phrase, increase my prestige, Mm. right? Uh, In in their case, I'm sure they mean something good by it, but I think we do it all the time. Like, um, it's not enough that Ben and Jerry's makes good ice cream for a little town in Vermont. We want to become global ice cream makers who no longer make the same kind of ice cream in the same way or have the same effect at all and don't belong to that community except as proprietors of a giant factory now. No, no. Your generation seems to me to be making this extraordinary call that says, I mean, a few of your generation, this extraordinary call that says, um, I... I'm going to begin to try and discern what is the good and seek it because I perceive that my happiness, the happiness of my spouse, the happiness of my children is dependent on and will be better served by that search than by any of the answers that I see as being held out to me conventionally for prosperity. Yeah, and um, I I do think the Holy Spirit is moving in the church to finally tear us from... um, I just the idolatry of money. You know, and what happens is when as, you see examples of that, and I, you know, I had a conversation yeah. with that new young couple, the Pattersons, last night. Mm-hmm. You see examples of that in other people, and you see the life and the happiness and the camaraderie yeah. that well, that it, naturally yeah. happens, and you want to go join it. So what, it what spreads. I, what I hear from a lot of a lot of the people that are moving here and is that they wanted community, right? So yes. they, they were somewhere, they were working a job, they had success by worldly standards, yeah. but they didn't have That's right. community. And That's what's, right. this is what really fascinates me about community. You said it's a mutual work, like it's yeah. a unity of work. Well, I think it's a big part of it, yes. Yeah, and I think the thing that, that confuses the world, as it were, with this dissatisfaction, is they say, you don't have community? What are you talking about? You live in this city, and there's all these people around you, Go make friends, you know. Right. Um, now, so they treat community as another commodity, <laughs> which is to say That's that right. community is something that exists sort of out there. Mm-hmm. And if you want it, you go buy it. That's this right. is what drives you buy yes, it by money provides us everything we want. How do you buy it? Well, you buy it by whether it's buying the real estate so that you're right there, yeah. or buying the identity through. You, you go know, live in an intentional clothes, community the... that ha- built. Um, pocket neighborhoods, <laughs> and you pay your four hundred thousand sure. dollars for your little tiny thing that faces onto yeah. a green with everybody else, and yeah, then you yeah. say, "Now I have community." Yeah, and so so what's dissatisfying about this? Well, the the problem is that the way in which people are unified is not accidental to the creation of community or not. So what I mean is, I can hoard a hundred people into a room yeah. through the creative use of electric fences. It doesn't necessitate that once they're there, <laughs> they are a community, right? And 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 what what I'm seeing is this: there's this there's this um, growing sense that community isn't something you can buy precisely because it is in working together that it's produced. That's so, right. And what this means, if that's the case, then it's not that it can't be a commodity because precisely what you need to no longer need the world is the thing that builds up community. What I mean is not, I'm not talking about like just mutual needs. I'm talking about when you do things with other people as opposed to go and try to consume them as fulfilling Mm -hmm. your need for an abstract Mm -hmm. community, Mm -hmm. you actually build it. So if you seek community, you don't get it. If you work together, you get it. Mm -hmm. And, and what, working together is is the loss of the necessity of of the tyrannical systems that's of provision right. right that's right okay that's so what am i saying i'm saying that when you 
when people want community here and move here, sometimes they're even in the commodity mindset because why yeah, not? That's yes, how we're raised. Absolutely. Okay, so right. I miss this thing and I want it and I've been watching TV and it looks like these people have it uh, right. on this show and right. what can I find that's like that and go get it. Yeah. Okay, and then they arrive here and then the conversion begins because you realize that it is not consumptive. Um, it is mm. something that comes from love and from gift um, in and through mutual work. So what really needs to happen is I, if I'm going to have the thing I want, I have to um, get on board with a larger revolution. Yeah, I, I have, to, I have enter to start working to it myself. What do I do? Well, maybe I maybe I work as a butcher. Maybe I help yep, with slaughtering. Right. Maybe I help with um, the the you know the grocery uh, you know distribution. Maybe I'm um, joining a construction team and trying right. to you know what I mean. It's not ever a commodity except oh, it's just not a commodity. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I it excites me because um, there's just the synchronicity between conversion and then building an independent social order and that simply being the building of community um, itself. It sounds yeah. to me like you're, what you're describing corresponds to what I think of when I think um, you, you want to do the good. You need to discern through whatever means are available yeah. to you where the good is, not where the profit is, whatever kind of profit you have in mind, not what commodity is it that I need, yeah. you know, I desire to mm -hmm. consume and how mm -hmm. do I get it? But what is the good thing here? That's my conversion yeah, yeah, yeah. story, right? As I say, I need to do the good. I'm going to try and figure out what it is mm -hmm. and then do it. Yeah. Um, but in our case, we would say the good partly has to do with settling in a place and taking care of it yeah. carefully. And then many good things flow out of that, things like food, but also community flows out of yeah. that. I tend to think of community in terms, I say, community are the people who stay, right? Mm. You want community? You got to stay there. Yeah. It doesn't happen <laughs> if you keep jacking up and going somewhere else to go see if you can find that commodity. Right, right, right. But it happens when something makes you stay and then you begin to work with other people to make this place right. Wendell Berry yeah, says yeah. it has to do with neighborhood is the, is when people living in proximity seek to meet theirs and every, their and everybody else's need. Again, that's working well, together. And and we yeah. used to think of vocation and vocation is how am I called to serve the world? That's right. right, right what right. is my calling? And we've calling? totally lost that. Yeah. Colleges are you know, nobody talks about vocation right, anymore. Right, right. Yeah. The, the vocation of motherhood is, that's absurd. Right. I mean, that's low because you need to be going to college and learn how you're going to make money because that's what the system needs. Yeah. But instead of saying, I'm going to find a vocation, and we've had an apprentice who is now engaged to our, daughter, uh, to our son who we're thrilled she's going to be a wonderful daughter-in-law. But when she came, she was much more kind of in, you know, how am I going to get a job? And she's, she now, or for a very long time, she went from family to family mm -hmm. to family serving. She was just this wonderful gift to all of us as she would help out with kids and do different things. And, you know, and then she just... trained to be a potter and she's a potter and she teaches potter and she works at an organic farm around here and she cobbles together her needs out of service. Yeah. You know? and, and, you know, there's that line from John Paul II that man only finds himself in the sincere gift of self. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and so the answer to the struggle of why am I not happy is not answered by finding a missing thing. It's giving yourself mm -hmm. I think so. mm -hmm. where you are mm -hmm. or where you're going to be mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. That's right. um, and then you find yourself precisely because you built and helped to be a, build the very community that answers that question. Who am I? I'm a part mm -hmm. of these people. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, you mm -hmm. found yourself mm -hmm. as a part. Mm -hmm. You're a puzzle, a puzzle piece. Yeah, yeah. That's In marvelous. That is, how I, that is how I find myself is yeah. by, by becoming a member of a community of service and then finding yeah. I am the person who is, who serves <laughs> these people in this way. I'm, I'm a cell among many we, cells. We never would have thought we would be where we are now. Speaking on, sure. on, doing what we do a lot of it's mm -hmm. been accident 
And we love what we do. Yeah, yeah. We love living this lifestyle and we love sharing this lifestyle yeah. and teaching this lifestyle. Um, and we think that it's, we think that what we're doing is a really good thing. And I, I, I think there's a darkness that comes with saying that the answer to my own need is in community because it means that there's an initial period in which, especially within this Catholic vision, like you don't get the satisfaction of the commodity, right? Which mm -hmm. says, oh, yeah. oh, what you need is to be in Colorado. Yeah, that's right. You're in Colorado. That's right. Yeah, right. Um, it's like, no, no, no. It says you need to give yourself, right? In order for the world to become that's right. the product of that's your right. gift, of your work. Mm -hmm. And then you find your place in it precisely because it is you in some but way. It, right. it is that like, takes time. Yes, right. It is so like walking onto your farm. Yeah. You've bought this piece of land. Yeah. And now yes, you've got to find like out that. what the land is going to allow you to do or yeah. what you allow you to How do. How you're going to bless it so it can bless you back. And if you're going to come in and you say, by gosh, this is what this land's going to do, mm -hmm. very likely you're wrong. Right, right. But if you came in and you said, and so when I enter this community and I want everyone to jump around me and say, oh, I'm so glad you came here. Let me give you a job. Right. And nobody's doing that because you haven't, you're, you haven't, in, you haven't. We don't know you. You don't know us. Right. And we're hesitant to invest ourselves in you because, as Beth says, you haven't committed to the place yet. Yeah, we so. don't know if you're going to be you here next year. Once you have said, I'm committed to this place, we want to invest back. But you here. say you're committed by staying That's and right. by working. Right, the words is, mean nothing. Right. Your right. longevity means that you're for real. Right, which is why it really detaches itself from commodity because it's not even something that in the buying of it is bought. Right. It's That's only right. about when you die. I mean, I think about the yeah, Bible. Yeah. It says, call no man happy while he is living. A That's man right. will be known by his children. That's right. Now, this is That's the attitude. That's also Greek. Where is that in the Greek? That you'll never know whether you are a happy man until you die. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it could be Boethius. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's, it's either Plato. I yeah. sound well, it's like true. Plato. So whoever yeah. said yes, it. Yes, it is. That's <laughs> right. right. Those guys Lots of people smart. probably said it because there are a lot of smart guys. <laughs> but out the, there. The, the the wisdom here is like, look, you if you want happiness as an object that you think you will be able to affirm that you have it, mm -hmm. then what you're going to do is you're going to place it in something which is of course going to dissatisfy you, and then you will your money. be unhappy. That's mm -hmm. right. So that's mm -hmm. why people turn to money. Mm -hmm. The dis, the darkness of the church, like the kind of existential darkness, is to say, I will not know. That's why? Right. Because that's right. because happiness is not just subjective it yep. is the building of a particular world that's free from fear how do i know whether i was happy it's when i'm gone and my children right. who are the actual effect of my labor right. what did your happiness do the most clear sign of what your happiness did is who your children are because if there's any i mean this is like the we think of like parenting and labor as somehow separate when obviously all other labor is really a kind of parenting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, when the Bible recommends that we look at the children of people in order to determine whether they were happy, we're saying like, look at the utmost product of their, of their gift. Like this is literally their gift. Mm -hmm. um, and then you say, okay, this is a happy person. Mm -hmm. So I can presume. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and, and it also is that we are really bad at, knowing what gives us happiness oh yeah we're really bad at it we keep on taking these surveys and saying yeah, things like right. america is the 32nd most happy country in the world it's that's like, right no. based on yeah whatever no, you, you think you happiness you are <laughs> you're going to be happy at the thing that god intended for right, you to right, do right, right. and we don't we think we know better than god I want or to talk, we're not impatient as you're saying we're not patient right. enough to let god tell us i want to talk about god and because i know we have to wrap this up mm -hmm. yeah. the one other thing i want to say about community before we move, we move to a theological, some theological questions, is that right now community is being asserted against its destruction because the destruction already happened. So what mm -hmm. I mean is, you know, you can sort of put your pin in the map of history where everything went wrong, fine, and we can argue about that. But what is undeniable is that in the recent past, the success of very wealthy corporations has been predicated on the destruction of subsistent mm. and communal forms yes. of life. Right. Okay. Right. Walmart's the obvious example everyone right. points to. We only go to Walmart because we don't have community to provide ourselves right. with these I things. Need, yes. I need it. So like we're trying to revitalize um, the, the downtown right here yes. in Steubenville. Right. right. Now, this is one example. Downtown, never free of like any capitalist greedy impulses. But what it did have at some point 
was a certain distribution of ownership. So you had different mm -hmm. shops. Mm -hmm. yep. You got a butcher's mm -hmm. there. You got That's a baker's right. there. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we have Walmart um, in yep. which all That's of those right. things are right. centralized. Mm -hmm. And so producing a profit for fewer and fewer people who don't live here. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do we get from one to the other? Well, obviously, it's only through losing these that this becomes necessary to us. That's right. right? Um, so, you know, the studies on this are very obvious. Like the Walmart destroys its competition. Yeah. Right. Uh, Amazon destroys its competition. Right. right. Um, and it's only actually framed as competition from Walmart and Amazon, to be clear. It's not like we're all just in this neutral space of... Anyways, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is this, that the the success of our industrial system has been predicated on the destruction of a communal yeah. of a communal system right. and because of this what we have lost is the capacity for a diversity of roles within our society by which i mean the people we can actually yeah. talk to and speak to yeah. so what i mean is this if walmart is your butcher then you have one less family, namely the butchers, right. mm -hmm. who you are capable of loving. Right. Right. If Kroger is your grocers, then you've lost the green grocer. And we usually think of this just in terms of the product. So it's like, okay, yeah, you had a green grocer there, you had a butcher there, you had a right. shoemaker there, you had a, um, I don't know, whatever. And okay, now it's all moved into the centralized point, but you're still getting it. That's true. You're still getting the goods. What are you missing? The families. That's right. The loss is a loss of families. Right. Now we have, a, an, a, and of course you have some families because there's some people working Walmart. Mm -hmm. But what right. you have is a proportional loss of the capacity for community because it is built up of mutual work. And what right. our system does is it takes away the provision of that need of, of that work mm -hmm. from families mm -hmm. and brings it over to corporations. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about restoration, I just think about reversing it. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, how do we take, how do we get another family here? Well, we're going to have to take away the butcher from right. Kroger to get another right, family right. here. The, the point is not to say, I mean, because people will think this way, like what big thing can come and provide the money and provide the right. job so the people right. will come. Right. It's like, no, 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 let's get, let's do a different path. Let's reverse communal destructions and in and through doing that, let's enable one more family to occupy the position that has been right. cold and stolen right. into a centralized right. power. And, and it is hard to do because, Extremely. for example, butchers. Yeah. Um, right now, it's very hard to get a butcher date because, uh, you know, the If you big have ones... an animal and you want it butchered, it's hard to get right. a date with a butcher for the slaughter of that animal. Right. And, and so, you know, it used to be much easier now either because... You know, it's unclear exactly. So I've got a son who is a butcher, and he would love to do butchering. And he would love to do butchering in our little community. And then you'd and have a family, yeah. The expense yeah. from the government, the regulations, yeah. and yeah. all those kinds of things. Are there ways, and this is what the food, um, this is what the rogue food group is exploring, is what did Joel kept saying? It's no longer, we're replacing, oh, shoot, I wish I could remember. But we're not. It's we're not going to follow the rules anymore. <laughs> oh, he said, um, forget compliance. Now we need. It was this another C word, but I can't remember. Yeah. But it um, is us saying. It basically meant we need to come up with workarounds. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so we need to say we've got that family. They've got that capability. Yeah. Let's What's see. in the way of that right now? We've come is... up with clever ways of using the butchering skills that are available to us. Right, and people do that now. Some of the workarounds are that uh, I'm buying the animal yep. from you, yep. but I'm just buying the animal, and the sl and the butchering comes free. That's yep. right. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So there are ways to do that, but we have to think creatively, and yeah. we have to. Again, the big thing is we have to be committed to each other. Right, right, right. And we have to say. And being committed to one another is another way of saying committed to this place. Right. We exist in space. Mm -hmm. We're only with each other if we exist in the same space. So this place is where we're committed. Oh, and, yeah, and 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 yeah. the government is not our god. Right. You know, the government is actually in the way. Of yeah. an awful lot of the things, and you know Ronald Reagan saying that the government is not the answer; it's the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I love you know that idea of us getting together. And again, I think in Steubenville we've got the real beginnings of that happening. Yeah, and I mean, my only my only caveat to that is that it's not a lack of governance; it's a it's a 
growth of governance because the problem, oh, yes. you know, Teston said this about capitalism. He said that the problem with capitalism is that there's not enough capitalists. <laughs> I think that mm -hmm. it's true of our state. You know, the problem with government is that there's not enough governors. Like man in his original creation governs. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. what we do. It's mm -hmm. who we are. It is not something that should be outsourced mm -hmm. anymore. Right, right. Yeah, right. Proxy sure, sure. Right. until Absolutely. all we are is little consumers in our space. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Consuming so, so whatever. The whim of the government. That's right. 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 So, I mean, COVID is such a great example. I mean, sure. it's just insane. Well, but I think the butcher thing is very practical too, because it's like, what is the government doing? They're ensuring health and safety, ostensibly, right? And this has created a, uh, you know, this has created an obstacle now. Yeah. Okay. But the point is that, and this goes right back to Christ's point, where it's settle it among yourselves. Like the point is, is that if we have communities of love, then I, with in the way I slaughter my cow, I want to love the people that are yep. that I'm giving it to, and, and I want them to trust me and me to trust them. And right. we're, our goal is virtue, and the food and the slaughtering and the work is a medium for getting there. Well, you know, you don't need the government, not because governing is somehow bad, as if like what we want is anarchy, but because you're governing yourself right. from the beginning. You're That's saying, right. I'm going to do this well mm -hmm. for my neighbor that's out right. of love. I know that I'm going to eat right. this. I am not going to do this in a way that's going to cause me to get sick. Totally. Man, that's awesome. Okay, let's talk about God. Because it's the best to begin and end with God. Actually, we began, and, we began with man, didn't we? So. Well, then we'll end with God. So... To sort of summarize, we live in a very, very man-made world. The ceiling is low. The ceiling is not the sky. It's, you know, 10, 20 feet above our heads. And because of this, we've centralized power, property, and especially the production of food into the hands of man in an extreme way. Very few men who now hold it over the rest, uh, you know, the one over the many, and which makes us eminently capable of collapse, um, which ironically, given our system, uh, sim, 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 yeah. uh, but it turns us to, to, to this threat of disaster, which I think we feel looming, which we're sort of stressed by an unnamed anxiety, this threat of disaster, because we are um, the society that we are, our knee-jerk response is to have a greater dependence on man. How can another person, uh, not God, mm -hmm. how can a person assure me that the collapse mm -hmm. won't happen right. by greater applied technology, better know-how, mm -hmm. better business mm -hmm. models? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like maybe we could grow another monocrop and sell More it somewhere else, turn it into That's money. Right. Okay. <laughs> Bigger laws. That's right. um, okay. And then we discussed the existence of the new and exciting existence of subsistence communities mm -hmm. who have said, you know what? I don't want to be a part of the exchange of food for cash. I want to be a part of the beginning of all culture in the love of a place which feeds me in my very affirmation of the place as good. And then by its nature extends itself to a community that goes up and up and up until you're at like the fine arts. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that's the answer, and it's not a negative work. It is the work of Christianity. It is the work of conversion to build a new and renewed social order. And it begins at the bottom because, not because, and this is just one thing I want to make, this is a new addition, not, not because there are some people that should farm so that other people are like liberated from the land right. and can do other, you know, they might not say better things, but I think they kind of That's mean right. better things. We they, really do mean that. Way. We really do <laughs> look down on working in the soil. We'll admit it. Right. No, no, precisely, precisely the opposite, that it is because it is man's fundamental communion with the world, even brought up into the level That's of right. a sacrament of the church, where That's we right. are the way in which we Jesus. actually regularly, ordinarily consume God, become a part of God mm -hmm. is through food. That's right. And drink right. produced by the work of human hands. Uh -huh. This is not an outsourceable thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you look at the devastation of industrial farming and you think of it as it's their fault. They did it. Right. But when you don't farm is when things go That's right. That's bad. Right. We right? make choices. Yeah. So that industrial farm is your land gone bad. That's it's, right. You, you gone Absolutely. to seed, right? That's I mean, right. right. Every meal you eat that you buy not knowing how it was raised, 
you are complicit in the destruction because, of farmland. Because the earth was given to all of us. That's, That's right. right. Private property, the, the taking of it is a momentary gesture the human makes, and it's supposed to be for the sake of the common good. So why mm -hmm. do we fence things off so we can better give them to our neighbors? Mm -hmm. we, we spend as and a so, family a tremendous amount of our time on food, preserving food, yeah. growing food, cooking food, a tremendous amount of That's absolutely natural. That's what everybody used to do. Yeah, no, I, I know. And, and we look at that and we're so puzzled as if we've been liberated yeah. from it. And now right. we can look at Excel spreadsheets instead. And I <laughs> have to move beyond it. I can go to Burger King. And... Which is right. so funny because then when we get home from our job and we're exhausted, what we're looking forward to is dinner. That's, That's right. right. It's like, we'll just make That's it right. all about dinner then, you morons. That's right. <laughs> that really That's was right. at the uh, I fundamentally... Speak, I am the moron, just to be clear. <laughs> near, the, near the beginning of, of our you know, we had this impulse to be in the country and farm that seemed natural to us, partly because it was familial. We had yeah. some background there. But as we began to tease out the reasons and to try and um, understand our own thought, our own our own inclinations, um, that desire to meet our needs directly through the work of our hands rather than meet them indirectly through this, this long chain of event that goes, I do something that is of no significance to me. And then somebody gives me a token of the value of that insignificant thing, not to even to him, but to somebody down his supply chain. And I take that token elsewhere and exchange it for, again, not even the fruit of this man's labor, but mm. something that came from far away through many, many supply chains. Mm -hmm. We just didn't want to do that. Sure. You know, we wanted to take that apart and say, look, I, I want to go to bed at night. I want to wash off the, the sweat and, t and dirt of my labor, knowing that my labor had this direct significance for yeah. me, for my family, and then for the greater community. No, the and, and the other thing that we have seen is that the food that we eat is not like anything. You've oh, it's eaten great. with this. Yeah, it's, it's the best. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really I'm always is. making up reasons to go to dinner. It's like we have very important things to think about. <laughs> I think so. About. We haven't totally come up with enough different. yet. Okay. <laughs> it is a totally different animal. Yeah. So I'll just end with this. It is my, it is my suspicion that unbelief today is much more the cause, is much more caused yes. by our practical separation yes, absolutely. from the land right. than it and is need from any particular land. argument. Right. I mean, like mm -hmm. the arguments of atheism are really dumb. Right? <laughs> yeah, they're, not, they they're not very smart. <laughs> That's right. They're but just God presumptions is, of materialism. God's but, irrelevant yeah. to me. Right. So the my rain, question, it doesn't matter if it rains. It doesn't matter what it, right. what's happening. That's right. Right. So the point is, the point is like, you know, the arguments of atheism are sort of like you just presume materialism and then you show that how how since you presumed it it's also true at the end of your argument that yeah. there's no right, God. It's right. Like, right that's mm -hmm. what you presume mm -hmm. but the question that i think is more interesting is like well, why does materialism uh, why does it seem so convincing in the first place and i do think it's like we're really just describing the world around us mm -hmm. what, we're, what we're saying is that there's no apparent god of this man-made yes. world which mm -hmm. is just a that's, right. that's just a um identity right like that's right there is no that's god right uh -huh. man-made world that's right but when you start farming Right, you know how dependent you are. It on does. God. It does. It is transformative because, yeah. that way. Things come up. Things don't come up. The weather, uh, you know, you don't have control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the primary, the primary dependence is on the gift of the world as it's given. Yeah, and you, so you've got a yeah. cow that's getting ready to calf, and if that calf's going to be alive or dead, mm -hmm. it's not a machine. Yeah. One great result of that, I'll just say, is that over time, you come to realize how little you understand of the big picture. And so when untoward event seems untoward, mm -hmm. um, you have That's right. a pattern of experience behind you that teaches you and reminds you all the time, oh, you don't know what this is supposed to look like. This weather event or this yeah. death has has uh come to you out of god's Goodness. eternal plan Goodness. you know not because things are predestined but because all of these relationships mm. are part of his big picture and so it does help you to 
to accept what comes and say, well, this, this, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right, right. And say it with conviction. Because it is always a blessing. And, and because the things that don't look like blessings right, right, are. Right. You're yeah. just seeing them from the wrong end at the moment. You yeah. Know? yeah. And it does strike me that our, our desire is, sometimes it seems to me in the church that we want evangelization without radical social change. Like we can have the world and then we'll just preach into it. That's right. The question right. is what kind of life makes the gospel believable? Okay. It seems to me like the, the life in which dependence on God is foremost makes the gospel believable because it says something like, Hey, you know how you're mm -hmm. all dependent on mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here is how God comes to us and assures us of his salvation. That's right. right. And you know what that's like because you know what it's like to need salvation because you you have uh, a dependence on the land and sometimes you need to be saved. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Whereas you know within a large industrial complex you still have that, but again the reference is always to another technology that's supposed to do the saving, another man that's doing that's the right. saving, and so the message of the gospel seems extrinsic. It's like okay, here's your life, which is basically managed, um, and now I'm going to tell you how much you really need God. Now you can think your way through it. Every man-made construction is dependent on the given. And this is what collapse shows. Mm -hmm. which well, is what, the stories of yeah. the Bible are stories of agrarian. And if you've never been agrarian, you, you have no, no that, clue when you they don't talk really about lambs it. and mm -hmm. all. It just seems, this is so weird. Yeah. There's a rabbi that said that um, the beginning of all of the Jews' apostasies began by turning away from agriculture. Oh. Yeah. I'd just, like to read that. Yeah. Find I'll that pull it up. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, there it is. I'm really happy. To have sat down with you. I want more time. To our conference, obviously. Right. Yes. April 1st and 2nd, yeah. mm -hmm. thehealingland.com. Right. And if you're not from here, come and come and just look at the different farms that are going to be on display. I think there are four or five farms you're going to be able to tour. Um, come and look at our children building things as part of our demos. This is going to be a really good event. There's a lot going to be going on. It will be unfancy. <laughs> what the Amish call plain. We're going to be very plain. But come come see it, not so that you can decide, aren't they lucky they've got that, or look at that neat thing they're doing, but you'll pick up a pattern. You'll begin to see light, hope, and be able to take some of that home. And then you don't need somebody to teach it to you because it's, it's inherent in the world how this stuff works. And you just take a seed home and it, and plant it and tend it. It'll grow. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much for listening, everyone. And we hope to see you next time on New Polities Podcast. Bye-bye.